Hi, this is Paul again. Now I'd like to introduce you to part 8 of Cubic Wonder. In my last two videos, I showed a lot of interesting results in helixes for DNA and stuff like that. Most of the work I'd done was based around the cube with a tetrahedron and octahedron. So now I'm going to focus on the fivefold on the icosa and the dodecahedron. This is what gives you the A and the B and the Z DNA. If you looked at part 5 of my video called Strings of Order, I showed how Bucky Cubes and Plato Cubes can change into icosahedrons and dodecahedrons. Now I show 8 Plato Cubes and this gives a bigger icosahedron. If you start with a Bucky Cube, then you have to surround with Plato Cubes. Okay, if we do the same with 8 Bucky Cubes, we can get a string of dodecahedrons the same. And we can have a mixture, if we want, of Plato cubes and Bucky cubes giving you icosas and dodecahedrons. Okay, now I've gone to 64 Plato cubes. I could change this into an icosahedron, but I failed to change 64 Bucky cubes into a dodecahedron. The geometry wasn't there somehow. But when I went to 6x6x6 six by six by six Bucky cubes or Plato cubes, I was beginning to get some fantastic results. Now notice to transform into the dodecahedron and icosahedron, it turns into a truncated octahedron. On the icosa it turns into an octahedron first and then truncates. The transformation geometry is based on eight sections. I guess this is pretty controversial to what's in the book. Now I'm going to bring the top bunch of cubes down 173.204. That is the long diagonal length of a Plato cube or a Bucky cube. Now look at the A first. We have a gap of 173 and the corner of the cube in B is dead center to the face of the bottom shape. Now look if we drop down another 173 the two shapes in A now meet perfectly. And when you change to the dodecahedron, the two points meet equally. Now we'll just bring the B and the Z, bring them together, 173. Okay, if you look at B, the point of the dodeca fits perfectly in the center of the face of the icosa. Now in the Z, you'll notice that the two icosa faces are but perfectly together and they form a Star of David. These perfect fit properties only seem to work out in the 6x cube arrangement. Now I'm taking all the stuff from the two center cubes and I'm going to bring back a 6x Bucky cube arrangement. And I'm going to slice down this cube until I get a 3x Plato cube arrangement. This will be 50% the size of the 6x Bucky cube. Now I'm going to make an outline of that 3x Plato and then I'm going to take a copy to the two dodecas and then I'm going to get the third dodeca in. I am showing this because the cube lines up with eight vertices of the dodeca and this shows that the five platonic solids are involved in DNA. If we focus now on the dodeca you can see three concentric pentagons on one of the faces. I'm going to change from now on into the plain dodeca because we don't need all these colors. Now let's focus on the icosa. This one's an interesting one. Notice I show the edges of a cube octahedron and that turns into the icosa. Look at this. This third generation icosa turns into a perfect C60 molecule. Carbon comes in soccer balls and flat laminates. All this stuff can be found in cubic wonder. I guess we are just scratching the surface with this system. So I'm going to change this icosa into a plain one also, and then I can move on. Okay, let's zoom in on the two dodecahedrons, and then we'll change them to the plane and start on the A DNA first. I'm going to show two rings of vertices in red and green spheres on both dodecas, and I'll give them a white ring and a red ring on the both of them. Okay, let's fade the dodecas away, and as you can see, I can make three rungs. Now these rungs would give us a helix, but they seem to be too far apart. I'm going to take the dodecas closer. Okay, 
The closest it'll go is 173 pico, and that's one little bucky cube apart. Now look, when we move the dodecas to this distance, look what we have. The bottom vertices of one dodeca is on the same plane as the top vertices of the other dodeca. We can now make rungs in a horizontal fashion. There's no chance of the top vertices and the bottom half vertices crashing because they're 180 degrees apart. If we add more dodecas and use these rings, we can make a rung assembly to match A DNA. Pretty close, I'm sure. Each cuba uses 100 by 100 by 100. But I realize that the researchers work in angstroms but I'm sure this simple geometry could be converted easily. Okay, now let's look at the Z or Z DNA. First, we'll zoom into the two icosas. Now I'm gonna set some little orange spheres on the vertices on two rings on each of the icosa. I'm gonna give these green rings this time around the vertices. Okay, we'll give this one a red center line. And look, we can make three rungs on this one also. But on this one too, the ladders are too far apart. So we'll go back to the cube assembly and bring it down to 173 again. Okay, now you can see that the rings, they don't go together this time. I've given a few measurements. They could come in useful. The measurements are pretty close but my program isn't exactly for that. Okay, when I add more icosas, I start to get some good results. But there's one thing different. It goes the other way, and that is exactly how it's supposed to be on the Z-type DNA. And if you count the rungs, it's 12 rungs, pretty sure. I'm also gonna add the soccer balls to show that soccer is in the DNA. I'll finish up this ZDNA and show the rungs and the helixes on their own and then we'll move on a little bit further. Okay, now we'll go back to the A, B and Z setup again. Notice that we get the cube of Bucky Cubes on the Dodeca A side and the opposite side on the Z side we've got Plato Cubes around the Icosa. Now if you look at the B DNA in the center, we have the both. I've got dodecas and icosas, and we have plato cubes and bucky cubes. We have a set of one and then a set of the other, and it keeps on going like that. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna focus on B and show an animation, and then I'm gonna take away the dodecas and the icosas and this and that, I must say it's a pretty complicated setup, but I am getting 10, 10 and a half rungs as B should have. And because the rings of the dodeca and the icosa are of different diameters, that's probably what's going to give you the major and minor stuff. Uh, something I'd like to add, the helixes seem to run pretty good, because if sometimes when the helix is wrong, it doesn't run very good. It would be nice to get some feedback on this. Also, as we move on a bit, I'm going to show different color swirls. So anyways, thank you for watching my video. So this is Paul signing off.